Well, hello, and welcome everyone. Gotcha Holic here, and today we will be discussing more Higurashi Go. I got that murder on my mind, got that murder on my mind. Now, I don't think you understand how happy I am that we got this reveal, so let me just put it into perspective. My last video, I spent 20 minutes trying to convince you that Reno is remembering previous timelines because otherwise Arc 1 makes no fucking sense. If Zotiko wants to break Rika and trap her in Hinamizawa, then why does she have Rena attack Keiichi? Keiichi isn't Rika! And if you explore the comment section of said video, you will encounter my lovely subscriber base. And you'll also see that I was planning a video for Mion, where I was going to take another 20 minutes to convince you that she was remembering previous timelines. However, in episode 23, Zotiko specifically says, Rena, Shion, and Keiichi are remembering previous timelines. Unfortunately, not Mion. So, whatever. I can't be right about everything, but now my Mion video's context is all fucked up and I have to remake it. I'm sorry. But I'm still working on it and it will be out before the next episode. So, what does this reveal mean for the story? And let me tell you, it ultimately means that the supporting cast is actually very important we're staying in Hinamizawa, baby. You know, fictitiously speaking, because actually being there would be fucking hell. And quick side note, I'm starting to think this feathering character might just be a troll character, and maybe this has nothing to do with Umineko at all. Just a possibility. Just another red herring. Just like Sachiko being the antagonist might actually be a red herring, because I'm starting to think maybe she's actually the victim in all this. Or at least she may end up the victim at the end of all this. I know, it's hard to believe, but you never know. Regardless, the fact that other characters are remembering previous timelines is huge for the story. This explains why Takano apologizes to Rika in that perfect arc. This alludes to the fact that maybe Tepe never had this syndrome at all, and instead was just solely influenced by Satoko. Which honestly starts alluding to the fact that maybe Satoko isn't in control of the syndrome at all, which again could play into her eventually becoming a victim in all this, however. I won't speculate too much, but we definitely can tie this to why Takano apologizes to Rika. And then we can fairly speculate that this could play into why Sachiko is holding Shion's hair ribbon in the cover art. Which then you'd have to look at the whole cover art and kind of speculate. So go watch my previous video. But many inconsistencies that I've brought up throughout all my previous videos, they all make sense now. So many times in my other videos, you'd hear me say something like, well, unless so-and-so is remembering a previous timeline, then this makes no sense. If Satoko facilitated Rika's death in Arc 2, then why does she have no idea what's going on? Why didn't she kill herself right away? Why did Beyond lock up Keiichi? But no, it all makes sense. My god, finally! Episode 23. Weird number to have, but thank you. Thank you. I'm sorry I can't contain my excitement, but this is driving me crazy for like 20 episodes. You have no idea. Ever since episode fucking 4. My first viewing of that episode was the first inclination I had to suspect that characters were remembering previous timelines and that actually influencing their actions and story. At first, I did think Rena was like, another looper kind of to fill in Sotko's role but then Sotko took over that role which you know a lot of the community already predicted and I was kind of on the train but I thought it was too obvious so I was like no what if it'd be Rena that'd kind of make more sense so don't get me wrong I'm very happy that I got this twist right but I've not gotten every twist right just a lot of them so the detail that gives away that characters are remembering previous timelines in episode four um I did touch upon in another video but basically the fact that at this point in the story, they really play into Oyashiro's curse and how it revolves around the festival and there's been these disappearances and murders like the previous four years on the night of the festival. And now if you know Rena as a character, she is an avid believer of Oyashiro in this way because she previously left the village, suffered the syndrome which she thinks is Oyashiro's curse, and when she came back she thought she was forgiven by Oyashiro. Again, she's an avid believer of Oyashiro in her own way. So now going back to episode four, 
When Tomatake and Takano disappear on the night of the festival, everything screams, Oh, Yashiro's curse! And going back to Rena, normally she would act freaky anytime this gets brought up. This explains her bizarre behavior anytime they talk about Satoshi. But instead, in Go, Rena, when she attempts to kill Keiichi, tells him that he will be the one to die and she will be the one to disappear. Of course, dialogue is very important to both Higurashi and most mysteries in general. Remember, Rena also tells Keiichi how she thought she was forgiven, but she guesses not, it's too late for her. This is her being self-aware of the syndrome and connecting what I was saying earlier with her leaving the village. She's identifying the symptoms of the syndrome, which is a different red flag in itself. But the point is that everything she says actually means something. So why would she tell Keiichi that he's going to be the one to die and she's going to be the one to disappear after Tomotaki and Takano have already disappeared on the night of the festival when she was the last one seen around them? And honestly, there's only a few reasons she would say this. One reason could be that she actually already killed Tomotaki and Takano, so that explains how she knows they didn't succumb to Orishiro's curse. And the reason she would kill them is because she knows they're the real antagonists because she's remembering previous timelines. And then another reason could be kind of the same thing, just without the murder. She just knows that they're faking their deaths because they're the antagonists because she's remembering previous timelines. And that goes into why, you know, she tells Keiichi, he's going to be the one to die. And she, being Rena, will be the one to disappear. Or Ishiro's curse, yada, yada, yada. I touch upon all this in my previous video. Now, speaking of my previous video, I'm actually going to go back on something. I'm not entirely changing my theory, I'm actually going back to what I originally thought. I've already broken this very scene down in great detail, explaining that Satoko has already induced the syndrome in Rena. But what if I was wrong? What if Rena is just having a massive flashback? Rena! Mm -hmm. Huh? Uh, sorry, I didn't realize how tired I was getting. Too much fun, I guess. <laughs> you okay? <clears throat> I'm gonna stop at the nurse's office before I leave. But can't help Kun. No need to worry about that. We'll go deal with him whenever you're feeling better. <clears throat> now, does Satoko still seem suspicious to you? I assumed she was either testing her syndrome powers or just seeing how far she could get with certain situations, but I did mention in my previous video, she never seems like she knows what's going on. Arc 2 especially has the most inconsistencies, as if you're familiar with my channel, I've gone on about four lengths. Arc 2 is fucked, but that's coming in, in another video. Even Arc 3, Sachiko seems like she has no idea what's going on. But isn't she the antagonist revolved around Rika? And, as aforementioned previously in this video, I don't think Tepe had the syndrome here. Maybe there are no reverse culprits. Perhaps Satoko is only getting a hold of that injection in the Satoko Hen arc. There's still a few mysteries in arc 3, but that's definitely coming in our next episode. But just wait till we get back into Satoko Hen. There has to be more explanation to these arcs. I suspect we're being trolled. I suspect we're being trolled on our episode count, on our title, on the fact that this is a remake. Ryukishi's a troll. Who would have thought? Now let us get into some theory crafting. God, I've never felt so free before. I don't have to keep tripping up over trying to convince you guys that characters are remembering timelines to make sense of my theories anymore. Fuck yeah. Alright, so first thing. Just because this is a theory that I have not yet covered on this channel and because it was a theory before the show even started. Is Higurashi Go a mere world? A reverse world. Will Satoko inevitably suffer the same fate as Rika, endlessly trapped in loops trying to escape her fate of endless death? Is that where the show is heading? It's a very interesting theory. Now we can toss out the hallucination theory as far as it being like the final twist because Tepe probably didn't have the syndrome. And I believe Ryukishi purposefully set Rena and Tepe to attack Keiichi and then be killed by Keiichi to throw us off. Not because of a hallucination, but because we're in a mirror world. Reverse fragments. The gateway to Umineko. Now, the multiple loopers theory was actually partially correct in a lot of different areas. The only, you know, correction is that they're not actually loopers, they're non-loopers. 
So are there multiple loopers? No, there are non-loopers. And then I guess the last three we can touch upon real quick. The OG Satoko Mastermind Theory. He he he, it's really me. I, so. So ultimately we know Satoko overcomes whatever trials, you know, await her in the first three arcs. Maybe she just kicks it into high gear, starts getting a hold of that injection, starts taking things into her own hands, as we see is a huge part of her character in itself. And she just starts going crazy on Rika, and that brings us to the cliffhanger we got. In the arc where Takano confessed and apologized to Rika. Which, honestly, a lot of this makes sense. She could still be the dead set antagonist. But I would not believe this with certainty, by any means. So I've already covered arc 1, and arc 2 is coming in my next video. And the show's kind of about to touch upon arc 3, so I guess we'll just go with arc 3. As far as applying these theories into the story. So Ryukishi did say in an interview that Oishi was acting on his own. So perhaps the situation that happened with Keiichi and Tepe was merely circumstantial. And then the possibility that Satoko set that up, though it really seems like she's trying to replace Satoshi with Keiichi, so I doubt it. I maintain that she's genuine, however. Oishi comes in after the fact, he starts remembering previous shit going on and knows that Rika's at the center of everything. Maybe that's why a lot of these reverse culprits, as previously aforementioned, are not actually reverse culprits, but just non-loopers looping under the syndrome. Ha! Huh, makes perfect sense. I don't quite think so. I think Sachiko probably injected Oishi after this event happened. After her time with Keiichi was ruined, she's like, fuck it, I'm killing Rika and resetting. And alas, that brings us to end our discussion. Pretty much touched upon everything we needed to. The huge reveal that multiple characters are remembering previous timelines. At least, it's a possibility. We're not entirely sure how that plays into anything yet, but predictions for next episode being episode 24. Well, it's clear that Satoko wasn't abused by her uncle. It was very obvious the first time I covered Arc 3 and what really happened in Arc 3. Um, I pretty much was spot on everything. Arc 3 was the easiest arc to figure out. Aside from Arc 1, but Arc 1 is really easy to figure out when applying that Rena was remembering previous timelines. Still, at the time, Arc 1 was, like, wishy-washy. And then, of course, Arc 2 is totally fucked. But Arc 3 is pretty chill. Satoko spends all her time with her uncle. Then that circumstantial event happens with Keiichi. And then Satoko's pissed, fucking injects Oishi, and it's over. That's pretty much what's going down. Alright, guys, expect my... Sonazaki Sisters video. We will dive deep into arc two, and with that, I hope y'all have a lovely rest of your day. May we explore this mystery together. Later, have a great time. See you next time. Sayonara. Oh, you like what I got, yo? See you in long time. <laughs>